Are social media personalities actually making bank like that? Welcome my special guest. I'm talking about Mr. Untouchable himself, <laughs> Melvin Gregg, <laughs> AKA DeMarcus. Oh, DeMarcus Tillman. You watching American Vandal. Now we're gonna get to that, but let the viewers know who you are for those who don't know. It's a broad question. Um, Very broad. <laughs> My name is Melvin Gregg. I'm from Virginia. I'm an actor, um, writer, director, producer. Mostly known, I guess you would say, I guess it depends who you ask from social media. Started on Vine, and Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of that stuff now, TV and film. So basically how it happened. I moved to uh, California before social media started. Like before social media was Give me a thing. Year. Uh, 2011, 2011, I, um, I left college my last year, went to uh, LA pursuing acting for like two years, just doing like commercials, indie films, student films, just like whatever I could do. That's a crime. grind crazy, and it's like really you, don't, you ain't making no money, especially the non-union stuff. Yeah, non-union stuff. You don't get your check for like three months. You can't call nobody because non-union they be pimping you. So I was doing that for like two years. I was like, yo, this is just like I'm competing with you know. 30, 40,000 new people every month. I'm not even gonna have an opportunity to separate myself. It's just gonna have to be luck on my side. And I don't like really playing with eyes that I ain't got no control over. So I saw social media starting to stem up and I was like, all right, I see this as an opportunity to, to grow an audience and then I'd be more valuable to a production. So I started doing that. But as far as the question transitioning over to Instagram, when I started doing Vine, the, the main demo was like, suburban white kids. I grew up in the projects my whole life, so it's like, I ain't relate to none of it. So I had to I had to look at what was working and kind of just teach the stuff to myself. But I was like, yo, I could do longer content on Instagram and there's more of an urban demo on Instagram. So maybe two years before Vine died, I had started transitioning over to Instagram so I could diversify my audience. Cause I always look at it as, all right, you get your social media popping so that you can get the TV shows and the mm -hmm. movies. Residuals, where's the money's at? Yeah, is there money in social media? Yeah, if you brand yourself right, maybe you should start doing some fashion over. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I'm doing some fashion over for Asian men out there. Yeah, man. there you go. Are there any projects that you look back where you're just like, damn, I wish man, I didn't a, do that? A lot of them, but I mean, they all- I'm played, thinking about one particular. They all played a part into me getting here. Which one was you thinking about, Sharknado? Yeah. <laughs> My team was like, yo, you know, there's a great following. There's a cult following for Sharknado. You have so many eyes. The, the night it drops is going to be like Twitter trending topic. Go for Sharknado. I'm like, all right, whatever. I went to Florida, did Sharknado, got my head bit off. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about American Vandal because this thing is hilarious. Oh, uh, thanks. Really, really good performance by you particularly. Thank you. Um, season one, somebody drew dicks on all the cars and these two kids, they, they held an investigation, like a, a documentary, to figure out who drew the dicks. Season two, completely different crime. They went to a whole nother school. There was a case of somebody putting laxative into the lemonade, and everybody like started getting diarrhea and shitting on themselves. It was a Twitter video that was viral that people thought was real, yeah. but it was you know actually from the show. So these people come to the school to figure out who it was that did like the shit crime, and it was a series of three different crimes. It was a guy who admitted to doing the crime, and then it was his best friend who was saying like, he couldn't have done it. I think it was this guy, which happened to be me, um, Demarcus Tillman. His big head over here. Yeah, big head. <laughs> Demarcus Tillman, who was like the number one basketball player in the country, uh, top high school athlete. And he's saying basically he's, no pun intended, untouchable. You know, they refer to the school as a basketball school with like an academic program, you know, rather than vice versa. Y'all yeah, should just cut to the Demarcus Tillman highlight reel like right now. You tell me if you can give these people buckets, okay? All right. Quavo. Yeah. Quavo could hoop, but he's smaller. Like, I probably got like 30 pounds on Quavo. Chris Brown. I could score, but it'll be a head-to-head -head Chris could hoop, and we like this Wait, shit. how high is your vertical? Because you were banging it with two hands. Uh, or did they lower the rim? Know. I don't know my vertical. I could dunk though. Dunking ain't dunk. on the ten foot rim. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm athletic. Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky could hoop too. I could I could score though. I'll score. Can you, you shoot him now? Too, but I could score. I don't know. I ain't seen him play that much. Bow wow. <laughs> yeah, I get bow buckets. He's just too small. Bow and beast though, man. Shout out to bow. Like Mike. <laughs> I grew up watching bow wow hoop. I guess it's clear that you want to be in the NBA celebrity basketball game. Hey man, if I am in the game and after talking all this trash, and if I'm trash, better we gonna pull this pull up from the archives. Ass. Yeah, pull it up, pull it up. <laughs> if you can only go to one concert, which one would it be? And I'm gonna list off a bunch of music artists. Mm -hmm. You tell me which concert you would want to go to, okay? Okay. A Biggie concert or a Tupac concert? I'm gonna go with Biggie. 
I'm more of a Tupac fan is like as a, a wide scope of everything he was about and believed in and pushed as far as the culture. But as far as just music, I gotta go with Biggie. Okay. Little Wayne or Drake? I'm gonna go with Wayne. I'm gonna go with Wayne. Ooh. It depends what year. Are we talking about prime? In their prime. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Wayne. Dipset or G Unit? G Unit. By the way, this is our open discussion for all the viewers too. Chime yeah, in. Chime in who they yeah. what they wanna go see. Little Uzi or Takashi 69? Takashi for sure. Why's that? Cause Takashi music is like hype. I want a mosh pit. Like Takashi inspired Goth Mike. Oh yeah, talk about this. This is a goth game. He look more like Uzi. Goth Mike is an is artist I manage. You know, he part of this, this goth game clique. And so I this is a real person? Yeah, I guess he was just a reflection of the music of today. How do you feel about uh, Netflix using your face on the thumbnail? At first somebody told me, it was like, yeah, you know, Netflix got an algorithm. They base the thumbnail off of the type of content that you typically watch. I was like, oh, okay. I guess all the black people get in my thumbnail. And then, you know, I just heard from other people that like my thumbnail is the one that they're using. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not uh, true. Yeah, it's, it's great though. Melvin Gregg, AKA Mr. Untouchable. Hit him with that signature move one time. <laughs> Yo, play him a sad song out of here. Yeah, make sure you go follow him on all his social media platforms. If you want to. Yeah, and uh, watch American Vandal too. Let us know what you think. There's a special Easter egg in American Vandal. I'm not gonna tell you what episode, but it's a screenshot of a, a text message conversation and I wrote it myself. Just check out the screenshot. Screenshot it, tag me in it. It's, it's basically you talking with your... It's me talking with my, my friends from the hood and then me talking to the white friends. And um, yeah, I ain't gonna say too much. <laughs> okay.